Okay, uh, we're going to try and wrap some things up tonight, so uh, let's see if we can do this. What I'm not going to do is uh, I'm not going to recap. Well, when I say not going to recap, I mean I'm not going to recap as much as I normally recap. So we're not going to go back a bunch of dispensations, but uh, we have been looking with interest and with intent at the different dispensations. I have been I have been blessed, I have been challenged by some of the questions that have been asked, and I have also been, I would have to say, blessed by the amount of people who have come and said, you know, uh, I've been in church a long time, I've never heard some of these things, I didn't understand some of these things, and so that's always encouraging to hear, and if we've helped you in some way understand what God is up to. It's good to know what God is up to, amen? I said it's good to know what God is up to. He, he laid out the story. I listened to a famous preacher, uh, some yesterday, some today. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is. If I told you who it was, you'd all know. He's like world famous, probably one of the biggest preachers in the world today. Um, I, I listened to him, and man, I never heard anything so crazy in all my life. He's talking about the fact that God loves to surprise us. God loves to, like God surprised the world, you know, and he sent Jesus, and he surprised the world. I'm like, have you read the <laughs> Jesus showing up was not a surprise. It had been prophesied for thousands of years. And it's God, God doesn't keep secrets. He wants you to know. He wants you to know what he's up to. He wants you to understand the plan. Now, I grant you some of it is we got to dig in a little bit. We got to understand. But God isn't hiding things from us like, boop. <laughs> Here's my son. Boop. Didn't see that coming. You know, it, from the foundation of the world, he said that he would send a Messiah. Amen. And so uh, I, I pray that it's helped you see some of what God is up to. Not that we understand fully. The Bible says his ways are not our ways. We can't fully understand. But that we can understand what God is doing in the universe. And so each one of these dispensations, as I believe, kind of pulled the curtain back a little bit and helped us understand a little bit more of what God is up to. His mercy, his grace, his love. Each of the dispensations we've covered have nine facts or nine principles to them. We are uh, right in the middle of the dispensation of uh, uh, grace is the one we did last week. Uh, we're actually in the dispensation of divine government, the millennial reign. Um, I, I hope they know the slide they ended on last week. I believe the slide was the test to obey Christ, resurrected saints. That was the test. Ve Who's up there? Who is that? Steve, you're the man, baby. I'm telling you what. God bless you. Thank you, Steve. We have some incredibly talented people who work behind the scenes in our church, and they're just fabulous. Slide people, sound people, most of the sound people, but um, that's a good one. Uh, technical people and people who make all kinds of cool things happen. So thank you, Steve. Um, we are covering the last dispensation of man's uh, dealing with God on this planet. Sometimes it's called the millennial reign um, I believe the correct term is the dispensation of divine government, but it covers a thousand years, so normally it's referred to as the millennial reign. Uh, and, and so we covered the name, we covered the length, the favorable beginning, and in each dispensation, remember there's a test. What is it that God is testing men with? And so in this thousand year reign, the test will be to obey Christ, the resurrected saints, the civil and religious laws of the kingdom, and to conform to the will of God. The laws of the kingdom... It was two questions I got asked last week. Someone sent me an email and they asked me, you know, what are the laws of the kingdom? The laws of the kingdom are some of the Old Testament laws and some of the things we've seen in different dispensations. Some of those things will come back into play. Um, uh, if you commit murder, I believe you'll be put to death. There'll be laws in the land. There'll be governmental laws and religious laws uh, and that we are to conform to the will of God. Number five, here we go. See if we can get out of here tonight. Number five, the purpose of God. In each dispensation, God has a purpose. They're not something that he's just doing for fun or to, act, to, to be kind of just a, uh, accidental, as it were. It is to put down rebellion on the earth. This divine government will finally squash rebellion on the earth uh, and, and fulfill the everlasting covenants of the past, vindicate and avenge Christ and the saints, Exalt the resurrected saints of all ages to a kingly and priestly position. Judge the nations in righteousness and restore the earth to its rightful owners, the sons and daughters of the living God, and to God himself. God will take authority once again. Uh, to restore Israel as the head of all nations 
and put all enemies under the feet of Christ so as to bring back the perfect conditions that existed before the fall of Lucifer and Adam. This is the purpose of God in the dispensation of divine government or the millennial reign. Now, I, I told you last week, we've left out this important event called the rapture of the church, the tribulation uh, uh, of, the, of the earth and the, uh, the great tribulation, the Antichrist. We've left all that stuff out. And I, I, I thought I'd covered it, but a couple of people were a little bit confused. So can I just pause just to state again, there will be people who, when the dispensation of grace, which is not fully over yet, but when the dispensation of grace, when Christ returns at the rapture of the church, obviously millions of Christians from all over the planet will disappear. You're going to be one of them. Amen. The Bible says we'll be caught up together in the clouds. We're going to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. The trumpet of the Lord shall sound and God is going to call us home. Um, there will be scores of millions of people left on the planet who are alive. And this is the question that people ask, and they were a little bit confused here because it says, you know, the, I, I'm talking now about uh, that God is going to be vindicated, he's put down rebellion. Well, if we've been resurrected, where is the rebellion? There will be millions of people left on the planet who will live through the tribulation period, and they don't all die. Millions of them will live to the end of the tribulation period. And so when Christ comes back to, to, to launch the millennial reign, there will be scores, millions of people on the planet who are still alive and they are, now I don't want to miscommunicate this either, they are still what I refer to as completely human and normal. We will be human, but we won't be normal anymore. We'll have a glorified body, hallelujah. When we come back, we can't die, we can't age, we can't, I don't know how old we're going to be, I don't know what you're going to look like, I'm going to be six foot four and a half, I'm going to have this gorgeous head of hair, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I just saw a guy go like this, I'm like, I hated you before, but now I hate you even more. Uh, I, I, I'm going to look absolutely fabulous. But the Bible says we will know each other. We'll be known as we're known. I don't know, what, we're all, I don't know if we're all going to be the same age. The Bible doesn't tell us these things. But we're going to get a glorified body. So I know it's not going to be this thing. I can tell you that right now. All right? It's not going to be this one. I'm going to get a glorified body. Um, and we will, in that millennial reign, then I said, I told you this last week, we will judge the nations. We will be used by the Lord to bring peace and prosperity across the world. Uh, but there will still be nations and people, scores of them, millions and millions of people, who are still fully human. In other words, they can die, uh, they can obey, they can disobey, they can, they can uh, conform to the will of God, they can go do their own thing. If they do, if they do they'll be punished. It won't be like today. Why? Because we'll be running the courts. <laughs> so there'll be no, no delays. No stays. <laughs> it, won't, it won't take nine years, ten years. Nope. Guilty. Done. Penalty. Done. Uh, there'll be full justice. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, and, and so this is the purpose of God, to put down all rebellion on the planet. doesn't mean it's all gone. It, it just means this is the purpose of the planet. Number six, the means of God accomplishing his purpose. You remember in every dispensation, God has used a means. He said a, a tool that he has used. Uh, he will send Jesus Christ, faithful angels, and the resurrected saints from heaven to put down rebellion on the earth. And he will complete his testing period for man and remove the curse. Now, I, we talked about this just briefly last week. And again, some people said, what, Pastor, are you really serious? I told you last week, the moon right now, if you went outside during the millennial reign, it says the moon will be seven times brighter than it is right now. It says the, uh, I'm sorry, the sun will be seven times brighter than it is. It says that the moon will be as the day time. So I, some people ask me, I say, well, when are we going to sleep? Who will sleep? Don't worry about it. You close the blinds, you'll take a nap. Don't worry, it'll be okay. Um, but there'll be no curse. So there'll be no sickness, no death, no cancer. Glory, hallelujah. No weeds. Seriously, no weeds, no thorns, no brambles, no uh, the harvest will be plenty. There'll be plenty of food. There'll be no. There'll be no poverty. There'll be no starvation. Whew, glory, hallelujah. There'll be no plastic bottles. I'm just. I don't know what we'll have, but there'll be something. I don't know paper. I don't know what, but it, it, we'll, the earth, we'll take care of the earth. It'll be this gorgeous utopia. God will be ruling. I mean, Christ will be ruling. We'll be helping Him to do this. Uh, there will be faithful angels. I, I believe that you'll see angels, not like we see them briefly now, but they'll be a part of the kingdom, part of what we see. We'll interact with them. 
We'll report to them. They'll work with us. Woo-hoo, glory, I'm going to have a pet tiger. Why not? There'll be no ferocious animals. Uh, any, any pet you want, you could just have it. In other words, it'd be great. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Amen? And it's only just, it's like the previews for what's really going to happen. Uh, I, I hate to get to number seven. Some of you remember what number seven is, right? It's the failure. Man always fails. So number seven is the failure. This dispensation that we're talking about, this millennial reign, with everything I've just described to you, will not work. Man will fail this test. Now, when I say man, remember, that's the part people got confused about last week. Not you and I. If you were raptured and you're in the millennial as a, as a saint of God, guess what? You, you're not, you're not going to fail in the millennial. But the human beings that are here and live for a thousand years, many of them will fail. As in all six previous dispensations, there will be some who will not choose God and righteousness. I know it's mind-boggling. I know you say, what? I don't get it either, but I know there was a time in my life when I rejected God, and he'd been pretty good to me too. So <laughs> people can still reject. At the end of the millennial, multitudes will follow the devil who will be loosed from the bottomless pit. So you remember, at the beginning of the millennial reign, Satan has been bound in a chain, cast into the bottomless pit. At the end of the thousand years, he will be released. And I know, I know, I know, because the first time I read it, I'm like, why would God let him out? Don't let that sucker out. We know what he does. Keep him locked up. But for the test of this dispensation to work, he must be released to see what will happen with these human beings that are on the planet. Um, The Bible clearly tells us that when he's released, uh, he will move out across the earth and he will actually get people to openly rebel against the kingdom of Jesus Christ and the, the nation of Jerusalem. He will get not just 10 people, not just five people, he will get whole nations to rise up and come one more time against God. And uh, it's mind-boggling to me, but when you look at the world today, and if I start to pick geographical areas, boy, am I going to get in trouble. So you make your own geographical areas, okay? But there are nations on the face of the earth today that, and the Bible refers to nations sometimes as sheep nations and goat nations, and that God separates them that way. Uh, And there are nations on the face of the earth today, you have to understand this, that there are nations today with hundreds of millions of people in those nations where there is no fear whatsoever of God, no reverence for God, no belief in God, in other words. Uh, they, they crush Christians, they destroy churches, they, they do all kinds of atrocities, in other words. When Christ returns and he takes authority, I believe they will submit. Woo! They don't want to die, they'll submit. But in their hearts for the whole time, the whole millennial, they will be in rebellion internally. And as soon as Lucifer is loosed and and gathers them together, uh, they will turn once again on Christ uh, and on his followers, us. Uh, Number eight, there must be judgment. So whenever there's a failure, there must be judgment. I wish it wasn't so, but God is faithful and just. Uh, The Bible says that fire will come down from heaven and devour the rebels who have lived through the thousand years or part of it uh, if they're born within that period and who choose Satan rather than God. Thus God will bring now to an end the rebellion in his universal kingdom, which began with Lucifer, unfaithful angels, demons, and the pre-Adamites in the Antichotic Age. And I can't go back and teach on all that. We go back, listen, eight weeks ago. Uh, And which broke out anew with Adam and the Antediluvian Age. So big words, but if you were here, you can go look at your notes. You'll remember what they are, all right? Uh, And so uh, all of those people that have been in this constant rebellion, this will be the end of it, at the end of the millennial reign, when God calls time. And the earth will literally be destroyed by fire. Uh, Because I know some of you understand and know, because you've heard enough in church, that the the new Jerusalem, the city of God, is going to come down. It'll be on planet earth. So (laughs) some of you are like, what? So uh, this is on the new earth. In the new earth, in other words. Uh, The city of God will come as God will dwell amongst his people. But this is in, uh, I got to turn the page. There's still judgment. The judgment will come. The fire will come upon the earth. All human rebels will be resurrected to face judgment and be confined to eternal hell with all other rebels. 
And righteous angels and men who are righteous will serve God and will help him administer the affairs of the universe forever. Whoo, hallelujah. So at the close of this rebellion, God will vanquish uh, the righteous one more time. The, the devil will be not destroyed, but will be cast into the lake of fire. All sinners will be judged, in other words. And number nine, we're almost there, folks. We're on the home stretch. Number nine, the final step in the last dispensation of humanity, or God's dealing with man, God's provision of redemption. His provision of salvation through Christ is eternal for those who accept and conform to it during this probation on earth. So I fully believe that there are people during the millennial who will be born, who will not reject Christ, who will not side with Satan, who will side with Christ and with his kingdoms uh, and with his army, and they will move with us into all of eternity. And they will live as human beings on the planet for all of eternity. They will make it through the, the tribulation, they'll make it through the millennial reign, and they will live as human beings, as Adam and Eve would have still been alive. Uh, the resurrected saints who are to reign as kings and priests with Christ for a thousand years uh, will have been saved from all sin and the possibility of rebellion by this time. Uh, the natural people who remain true to God in the last rebellion on earth will be saved to enter that eternal kingdom to multiply and replenish the earth eternally as God originally did when man was created. The full benefits of redemption will then be realized and enjoyed eternally. So we will live forever and ever and ever. We will reign eternally. And so will those human beings. Now, uh, without getting ahead of myself here, uh, those human beings who now live on the planet, now those will, they will be kept alive by the tree of life, by the waters that flow out from the throne of God, and they will live forever and ever and ever, and they will marry, they will have children, they will procreate. And I know that bothers some of you because we no longer will create, procreate. And there will be no reason. If you're an eternal being, you don't need to procreate. So you and your wife will, I believe, still be known to each other and will know each other as husband and wife, but there's no reason to keep having children. Those. But those human people who live through this period, they will move into eternity and they will replenish the earth because now the earth has been destroyed by fire. They will replenish the earth. God will put everything like it was and the universe will be put right. Now, without getting too Star Trek on you, the universe will then be put right. So I believe that there are other planets that will be inhabited and the universe will once again sing the glory of the Lamb of God and give glory to God eternal and the whole universe will be put right. What the devil has destroyed, God will have turned all around and everything will be good again. By this time, the earth will have gone through three perfect states and two sinful careers. So uh, by this time, when this comes to an end, in other words, and I'll, I'll give them to you this quickly if you want to take a picture of them. There's the original perfection of Genesis 1, 1. And then there's the first sinful career of judgment of Lucifer and the pre-Adamites. Then there's a second perfect state, Genesis 1. Remember the gap theory? This is Adam and Eve, in other words. Then there'll be a second sinful career, the judgment of the Adamites. And then there'll be a third perfect state when renovated by fire. Numbers are so important in Scripture. Um, uh, this will be the third perfect state. God is a trinity. There will be three perfect states of this planet. This planet has gone through a water baptism. It will go through a fire baptism, one symbolizing the water baptism of a believer, the second one the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the tongues of fire, in other words. And so everything is showing God's glory and God's purpose, and that will be the end of the millennial reign the seven dispensations, and we are done with the seven dispensations. Would you say hallelujah? hallelujah. And then, lastly, just because I have time, uh, I think in your notes it's there. I've called it the dispensation of the redeemed and faithful angels. So I'm not going to teach much on this because we don't know a lot about We know a lot, but... Uh, Unlike every other dispensation, there are not nine facts to this dispensation because this dispensation will last forever. This is the dispensation of eternity. And so there's no failure. There's no test. There's no mess up. There's no judgment. Oh, glory. Because God is now done dealing with man. He has used man to correct the universe. 
He's used man to bring a savior to put the universe right. Now the universe is right. Doesn't mean he's done with this. It just means the purpose of God dealing with us and interacting with us is over. Now we move into eternity. The final dispensation will be after the millennial in the new heavens and the new earth. God's original purpose will then be fully realized as it was before rebellion started in the kingdom of God by Lucifer and then subsequently Adam. He will then have a universe free from any possibility of rebellion in all the eternal future, governed solely by himself and the redeemed human beings and the faithful angels. Uh, This administration will be an eternal one. And if you send me an email and ask me to explain that, I will not answer your email. Uh, There is no way that our human mind can possibly ever get around this. Um, But we serve a God where time is irrelevant. It doesn't mean anything to God. You're worrying about next week. That doesn't mean anything to God. He was, he is, he forever shall be. Amen? Amen. And, yeah, but, but can you explain it to me? No, because all I know is yesterday, today, and I'm hoping I'm still going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> but who I am is going to come to an end, this flesh. This. But God is eternal. And we will enter into this phase of eternal bliss and glory. That's why the Bible says when it says things like this, that this little struggle that you're going through right now is nothing in comparison to what we will inherit. Oh, my life is hard. I've been through a lot of stuff. I know. And there are some people that have. There are some people that look at their lives and I'm like, how did you ever survive and make it? But here's the bottom line. However bad your life was, it was 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. We're going to live for 60, 80, 90 billion years. And you'll just be like, is it Tuesday yet? Is it Tuesday yet? And that's, we will dwell forever. Uh, And it's not, heaven is not, listen, it's not sitting around on a cloud and, you know, room, room, room. We will work. We will do things. We will help God build the universe. Science is just, listen, if, and you know, some science is cool to get into and some of it is accurate and some of it's guesswork and some of it changes. But if you even just do a little bit of Google research and just just do a little bit of research on the Internet about, you know, what science thinks about the universe and uh, they're just starting to figure out that, you know, it's not ending, that it's still you know, even if they believe in the Big Bang Theory, that since the Big Bang, it's never stopped, it's never stopped expanding, in other words. And, and sometimes I, I should have brought some just to, you know, because my mind boggles with it. But, you know, if you start to look at some of the planets that we think are inha- inhabitable, and if you start to do the math of how long it takes just to get to that planet, and then if you start to get into stuff that I really get lost into the, the physics and time and all those kind of things and start to figure out that you, you realize that if you travel to a planet that far, the, the person who travels that far hasn't aged, but you have. Math has already proved this, that, that if you could put someone in a, in a ship and fly them, you know, eight billion times the speed of light knows and send them for, you know, 20,000 years in, 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 in flight to get to that planet, when they get there, if they left at 30, they'd only be 32 years old or and you would have aged. And I know some of you are saying, what? You've got to talk to someone much smarter than me. I'm just telling you. And as I, I've researched, I've looked at it. And, as, and, and that's, not, that's not in the Bible. That's, science has figured this out. Math has figured this out. Quantum physics stuff has figured this stuff out. That, that once you step outside of what we know as this is where God dwells, there's no time. <laughs> there is no time. He lives in this eternal universe. He always has. He always will, in other words. Yeah, but don't you get older? Well, apparently not, because even if you get on a spaceship, even Will Smith. I just dated myself, I I know. (laughs) Uh, The dispensation of the redeemed and faithful angels. Uh, Finally, one last slide. Uh, Man will again be restored to his original glory. In the eternal future, he will once again have dominion over all things through Christ. And we will become heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ in all of creation. Uh, This does not mean, however, that God will somehow be dethroned or the faithful angels who have remained true to him through all ages in in the rebellion of both angels uh, and men. And those all free moral agents who have proven true to God will have a part in helping God administer the affairs of the universe forever. That angels are free moral agents 
and that many have sinned is quite clear in Scripture. But we will enter into an age where there will be no more sin, no more problems. The Bible says God will wipe away all tears. I, don't, uh, I can't even understand that. How will we know everything and not weep? I, I don't know, but God's going to do it. God's going to take care of us. Amen? And I, listen, I don't know about you. We don't talk about it enough. Uh, and I don't want to get so heavenly minded. I'm of no earthly use. But we forget sometimes that this is why Christ has saved us. He didn't save you just for next week. He didn't save you just for the next 25 years. He has saved you for all of eternity. He has a purpose for you. And, and I'm excited just to get into the millennial reign. I, I'm like, that's going to be pretty awesome. I don't know what my job is going to be, but I'm going to be out of work. The rest of you will find something to do. But I got no job. There's no preachers. <laughs> think about it. I'm out. Me and undertakers. I think there's like, I think there's like two undertakers on the whole planet for the millennial. I, I, <laughs> But, but, but I'm like, I don't know what, I don't know what I'll do. I'll be, happy to be a, I'll be happy to be a doorkeeper. Well, not really. I, I work pretty hard. I'm looking for something good. I, I want God to use me for something good. Amen? But we're going to be judges and rulers, and you'll be people who make decisions. And, and I told you last week, and that was another question I got. I, they said, Pastor Mark, you said there's still going to be cars. I'm like, it's not, it's not like some Star Trek movie. We're not going to go back where everybody's walking around with donkeys and ponies, in other words. When the millennial reign comes, there'll be technology on the planet. We'll use some of that technology. God will still use those things. People will still move around the planet. Now, I can fully see in Scripture where I think there'll be less big cities. And those God never intended for man to live in big cities. Although there'll still be a Jerusalem, there'll still be capitals. Uh, but God's plan is for us to spread out a little bit. When you get in cities, we get in trouble. Have you ever noticed that about human beings? When we get too close to each other, we get in a little bit of trouble. That's why God loves Vermont. <laughs> no, he does. But the dispensation of the redeemed and faithful angels, this is what we should set our eyes on. This should be the prize that we keep our eyes turned to. Amen? Don't give up. Jesus is coming soon. Just look at the crazy world and know that Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Now I want to take a left turn with you. And I'll come back next week, I told you, because I, I told you, I said we'll talk about the rapture, a little bit of the Antichrist, a little bit just to get you excited, because everybody loves the Antichrist. Everybody gets all worked up about the Antichrist. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Uh, so I'll have photographs next week of the Antichrist. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I got his photograph at one of our Assembly of God General Headquarter uh, events. He was there. But anyway, no. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll show you. I will show you some pictures of the Antichrist. But we'll talk a little bit next week. Just because I want to clean it up because there are some people that got very confused about, well, if the rapture happens, then who are those people and how do we go and how do they stay? And what about my loved ones? And can people still get saved? So we'll answer a couple of little questions next week about the rapture, about the Antichrist, and about what will happen in that seven-year period. I don't, we're not going to get into it for weeks and weeks and weeks. You know why? Because we're not going to be here. We're, we're going to be looking down. We're not going to be going through it. So bless God. But we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it just so you can understand. And get ready. And, and I believe it's important to understand these things so that you can see the signs of the times in the world. You can see that the world is shifting and getting ready. Uh, you know, one world monetary system. And as it, you know, these things are happening all the time. Happening. We're getting closer and closer and closer to all these things happening. Uh, when I was a kid and they would talk about that stuff in church, and I'm not that old, I'm 61, when they would talk about it in church, you know, I can remember preachers talking about it with the big charts. I got one, I'll bring it, maybe I'll bring it next week. I got a chart that would cover the whole back of this wall here, the old charts they used to preach from. Um, I'll dig it out, maybe if I can find it, we'll set it up here. It's cool to look at. Um, and it lays out all the things we talked about on a big chart and everything else. But I remember those preachers preaching on those charts and they would talk about, you know, the fact the Antichrist is going to come and, you know, you won't be able to buy or sell without his number and everything else. And, you know, they were trying to figure all that stuff out. And it was like, I got news for you. There's no Antichrist yet, but that's kind of the world we live in already. Uh, you know, you, you lose your pin number, you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, and, and everything you do, you, you realize that everything you do, somebody has that already. I saw the other day that uh, the uh, federal prosecutors, it doesn't matter who it was, but a guy they charged a little while ago in Chicago and then let him go, they subpoenaed him and his attorney and two other guys that were involved in the thing, 
And what they subpoenaed was everything they've ever done on Google, on the internet, on social media, on anything else. Those, somebody's keeping all that stuff. Everything you've ever looked at. I mean, it's happened to you. You've looked at something and then five minutes later, they're trying to sell it to you. <laughs> Has it happened to you where you're just talking about it and then you look and it's there and you're like, now wait a second. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's coming. There's a world coming. Uh, and we're getting closer and closer and closer. But God is going to take us out. Amen? So I want to take a left turn on you for 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to do one of the most bizarre things I've ever done. But I announced it at the very beginning. Because uh, we started talking about angels and demons. And I know some of you have got really cool angel stories. There's a couple of people that have come to me and said, i got a cool angel story. I want to tell, and I'm, I'm waiting to hear some of them. Uh, somebody told me one. Uh, it was not an angel story. It was just an evil mother-in-law. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> So it's got to be legit. Um, but I told you that I would show you some photographs um, and tell you just a quick story from my life. I, the Bible says that, you know, that we should be on good behavior because sometimes we can actually entertain angels unaware. Um, not, not people that you work with every day of your life. No, there, there's not a guy where you work that's an angel and you've worked with him for 25 years. Okay, I'm just, I'm just telling that's not an angel. All right. If he's holding down that job for 25 years, he's not an angel. All right. But the Bible says that we can come to events or moments in our lives where we can entertain an angel unaware. Someone who comes into our life and helps us or does something for us and then, you know, they're gone. And that can happen. Now, I'm cautious to do this, but I've had a bunch of people ask me and some of you have asked me and some of you have reminded me. Thank you for those of you that, Pastor, is this the week? Remember, you said you were going to do it. I appreciate the texts and the emails uh, because it's challenged me to say, well, okay, I'm going to do it. So, um, I'm reluctant to do it because I'm not really given to this kind of stuff. I'm not one of those preachers. Um, and I just think sometimes when you open this door, it opens the door to what I call the strangeness of the Pentecostal and the, the world that I, I somewhat grew up in, in other words, where everything is angels and demons. Angels are everywhere. Um, they are, but you're not interacting with them on most levels, on most days. Um, so... I'm just going to tell you, and I'll explain it this way. I have been saved most of my adult life. Not all of it. There's a little period, a couple, two or three years ago, where I was really far from God. Uh, but, but for the most part, <laughs> uh, I've served God most of my adult life. I have grown up in church. I, my grandparents were Christians. My great-grandfather was a Christian. My grandfather was a Christian. My Dad is a pastor. I, I grew up around Christians my whole life. I've been in church my whole life. I've been in church probably more than all of you put together. Um, this is who I am. This is what I do. And here's what I'm going to tell you. On one occasion in my life, I believe that I've interacted with angelic beings once. So now I may get to heaven and find out that there were a couple other times when angels saved my life. But that might have happened and I'm not aware of it. And it certainly might have happened when I wasn't serving the Lord. I think there was a couple of times when I probably could have died, but God sent an angel to watch over me. We could all say amen to that, right? Uh, we'd probably be dead if God wasn't watching over us. And he certainly uses angels to do that. But I'm talking about an encounter where you actually have a conversation or interact with someone and then later discover, whoa, wait, that was kind of bizarre. Those events were kind of strange. So uh, this is a long, long time ago. Uh, and I think they got some pictures, so uh, wait for me, Anna, but go ahead and show me that first one. Okay, cool. Oh, they got it up there so I can see that. Um, this is 1986 or 87. I, I'm not, I could look in a journal and exactly find out, but it's somewhere in there, 86 or 87. My son was born in 85. Um, this is a, that's a massive auditorium. That is in the Canary Islands off the uh, coast of Africa. And in 1986 or 87, uh, we took uh, 20 guys from our church, and it was a huge organization that we were attached to, this big, world-famous evangelist. He had bought the auditorium uh, and had given the whole audit. It was a huge movie theater uh, in the downtown area of the capital city in the Canary Islands and, um, in Tenerife. And uh, they had bought this uh, auditorium and then paid for a big architectural firm from America to fly over there and do all kinds of drawings and retrofit and given all the money. There was no church. There was a little tiny church on the island, but there were these missionaries, American missionaries, 
And they got behind the whole thing. So it was this big outreach. They were going to go and then do this huge crusade and fill it with all these people and plant this church. Uh, and so my dad was on the board of this ministry. And so we got involved. So 20 guys from our church went. And when we got there, I, I got time to tell you the story because it's a really cool story. When we got there, I got 20 guys in a hotel and I'm this young preacher kid. And we get to the island and the missionary says, we got a problem. I said, what's the problem? He says, we have no lumber and no tools. And no cement. I, I, I said, buddy, <laughs> I know they sent you a ton of money. I know this stuff was, all, he said, I know, but it all got robbed. Everything got stolen three days ago. And he said, I tried to wire. Now, again, I know somebody said, well, how, this is before you could pick the phone up and just call somebody, okay? And there were no emails, you know. He said, I tried to wire you, and I didn't know whether to cancel the trip or what. And, oh, I've been trying to, I've been running around. But he said, you got to understand. Now, don't forget, now you're on an island. So he said, for us to get lumber or even work tools, you know, drills and jackhammers and stuff, it could take weeks because they'll have to come from Africa or from Spain. We'll have to, you know, bring them in. So it'll, it'll just take forever. And um, due to my misspent youth, now this is being recorded, so I got to really, really be careful here. But due to my misspent youth, I spent the first morning in absolute total, for, I was like, God, th this is why would you bring us all this way? And now this is not going to happen. And God, you got to do a miracle. And, you know, God, we're going to pray. And I had some of the guys on the team. Some of the guys were a little nuttier than me. So they were praying and gonna, they were going to go down to the work site and believe that when they opened the doors, you know, the stuff was going to be there. I was like, go ahead, knock yourself out. God bless you. I'll, if you've got faith to believe for it, go ahead. Drive down there. Open the doors. I'm, I'm you know, me, I, I never seen God do anything like that. So I, I got to work a little bit here, you know. Uh, and, and so I started working. I started to make some phone calls and try to talk to somebody at the hotel we were staying at. Finally, and I, I, this is going to offend some of you, but finally I asked the missionary, I said, let me ask you a question. Is there a part of this city that you would call is the bad section of the city? He said, what are you talking about? I said, like a bad section. He said, well, there's some not neighborhoods that are not as nice. No, I said a bad section. Like, is there anywhere where there's brothels, prostitution? And now you got to think now, I'm a preacher asking a missionary, do you know there's any brothels, <laughs> prostitution on the island? You know, he looked at me like, you know, and he said, well, yes, there is a section like that. And he said, you know, we have an outreach there. And I, I said, let's go get in the car. Let's go. And so you can call me nuts. But so that's what we did. And so we went to this area It was daytime, but there were a lot of young women still working and there was bars and all people hanging around. And so I got out of the car with this missionary and we walked over to one of these young ladies and I said, hello. And she was like, hello. And she thought she's going to make some money. And I said, well, look, I'm happy to pay you money. I don't want any sexual favor from you. What I want is this. I want to talk to whoever is in charge of your area here. And she said, no, 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 you can't. I'm not. You're the police. You're the police. I said, no, we're not. We're not. I said, here's some American money. Please, just go. And in a couple of minutes, three or four men came out of another building, much bigger than us, much more frightening looking than us. And they said, what do you want? You from the police? What are you trying to do? I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'm just trying to talk to somebody who would be able to connect me with somebody that might know where a lot of stolen lumber is and a lot of material. And so we went into a room and we talked to some people and then we paid a little bit of money. And lo and behold, in four or five hours, these trucks came down the road to where we were and all of the stolen stuff was on that stuff. You're saying, you mean that man in there was an angel? No. He was a demonically possessed, <laughs> evil individual. Uh, but can I tell you this, that when I finally sat in a bar with the young women we had talked to outside looking through the windows at us, like, what are these Americans up to? When I sat with this man who I finally figured out, if there's anybody on the island that can get it, it's this guy. When I told him we were missionaries and we were trying to build a church, he didn't cry, but he looked at me and he said, my grandmother was a believer and she used to pray with me all the time. And I don't think it was the money we offered him. I think it was his grandmother that made him get and find the lumber for us in five hours. And the guy, I think it was the same guys who stole it because they drove it up and were offloading it and like, no problem, Reverend, no problem, Reverend, no problem, Reverend, no problem. <laughs> so that was miracle number one. Um, they have some more pictures, I think, of the interior. Can I just... Yeah, there's, this, this place is massive. I mean, you got I had 20 guys. We were there two weeks. 
the architect had told us that it would be this simple little job notes. We got there, there were classrooms we had to build. Uh, go ahead and show me another one there. And, oh, by the way, that is not me up on that scaffolding. All right? I was kind of like the foreman down on the floor. You can imagine that, right? Uh, these, we had to knock out these floors and then rebuild floors, so that's some of the guys working. Uh, by about five days in on this project, uh, and we started a day late because of the lumber situation, uh, about five days in, we realized we are never, ever going to get this finished before we leave here. There's just no way. Uh, and so, uh, give me a couple more pictures. Yeah, there's the guys up on the scaffolding again. That's good. People don't, they, they don't care about this stuff. I can see they're not interested. Go ahead. Give me the next one. Uh, some of those guys, I still know them. Give me the next picture. Can I have the next one? Maybe not. There it is. Yeah, that's, that's me taking a picture. I'm the guy with the camera. That's my job at this work site, all right? Uh, I mean, would you go up on those rats? I wouldn't go. Okay, leave that right there. So this is the alley across from the building we were in. So on day five, I'm leaving the building. I'm leaving this place. We're locking up. It's late at night. And no, that's not a glow of the Holy Spirit. That's a lamp, okay? That's just a street light, right? Uh, but in that little alley, I hear people singing in a different language, but I recognize the tune and the structure of it, that it's a hymn. And I hear these people singing this hymn. And so we look over the fence and we look and there are literally 20 or 30 guys, African-American, sitting around and they're singing hymns and they're having a little prayer meeting and they're singing. And so we introduced ourselves to them and I waved, hey, you know, and they came out and they had a couple of the guys that could speak a little better English and we got an interpretation through them and what we found out was they were staying about another block further down, there was like a hostel. And they were all staying in this hostel because what they told us was that they had been trapped, abandoned on the island. That they were a part of a church from Africa and a part of a, a group, a denomination that we're connected with actually in Africa. And that they were traveling to another nation in Africa and they stopped in the Canary Islands and somehow got stranded, got abandoned by the people who had promised them passage. And so they were kind of stuck and they were going to this next event. And so uh, we got talking to them and, and here's a bunch of them. So when they found out what we were doing, they said, well, we're not doing anything all day. Can we come tomorrow and help? And so 26, I think it was, on the next day of these guys came and they worked. There's another picture. Give me this. I, I want to get to the left. <laughs> Dude, look. <laughs> look yeah, I knew you are going to love that one, right? Yeah, look at that guy, huh? Oh, uh, that's what happened to my hair. Yeah. I think I got my cigarettes in my pocket there as well. That's a thing. Um, um, these men worked in two shifts. Um, they went up and down that scaffolding. They carried cement in and out. They cut lumber. They talked to each other in a language I, I've never heard of, some African language, and they talked to each other and yelled. I mean, they knew what they were doing. Like, they were like construction fiends. We left the Canary Islands. I, I've got to keep searching in my file because I know I have photographs of it. We left. That sanctuary was absolutely finished, complete. Seating, all the chairs in, everything in, everything done, all the walls painted, everything. They held a crusade two weeks later. Uh, a couple thousand people got saved. That church was running over 500 people just three months later. That church is still there, it's still in the Canary Islands. Now, you say, well, Mark, what makes you think they're angels? And I showed these to a preacher once and told him the story. And uh, this stupid preacher actually said to me, well, they can't be angels. You have a photograph of them. It's like, dude, they're not vampires. They're just <laughs> angels. Um, now, listen, you know, look, would I, would I uh, you know, base my life or my ministry on the fact, look, I believe they're angels? All I can tell you is this is, there was no way we were going to finish the job. They all showed up in an alley across the street from where we were singing hymns when I was leaving the building. And the extra wrinkle is this, is that, the names that they gave us of the organization and the church that they were from in Africa, we know, we know those, but we knew the denomination, we knew the people, we knew where they were from and where they were going. And so when I left, I said to the missionaries, look, you have to help these people. Like, you know, we can send a wire, we can, if they need money, like we'll help them get where they're going and everything else. And we left, came back to the States because those guys went to the crusade. They went to the first night of the crusade. We flew back to the States. I spoke to the missionary several times afterwards who told me, that three days later when he went to the hostel where they stayed, they were all gone. 
And so he could never help them. And when he wrote and sent letters to both of the missionary organizations that said, they said this is where they had come from and where they were going, both organizations said, we have no idea what you're talking about. We, we never sent any people there. We're not connected with that. We don't know anything about that, in other words. So uh, not that I sent out secret agents to try to find them, but in other words, that's what happened to us. I've always believed, I've lived my whole life believing that God knew we could not finish what he had called us to do. And so he sent these men, angels from Africa. See, all you African-American guys, right? You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know all, all of our black friends here are like, see, I know angels are all black. I know, it's, that's, that's more proof right there. I know it. I know, I know they're angels. Yeah. Well, it was an exciting time in my life. It was a great thing to be a part of. I, I hope it doesn't freak you out, and I hope it doesn't make you think you're going to turn around and see an angel tomorrow uh, or start worshiping angels. We worship Christ, not angels. Amen? But I firmly believe that at moments in our lives when we are in desperation or we are in trouble, God can send an angel to speak to us, to help us, to aid us, and even physically, uh, even physically, to interact with us and to help us through a situation. And later, they may, you, know, you may never have contact or anything else. Those. I've heard people get pulled out of cars, burning cars. I've heard people tell stories where they were in a hospital and someone came in and fixed something and, and no one could ever track down who that nurse was or that paramedic was. And you've got to say, man, there's paramedic angels in heaven. I believe it. Amen. They don't even need the paddles. They just go boof like that. The Bible speaks of ministering angels. Listen, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says. And ministering angels came and ministered to him. We don't have a clear picture of it, but we know this, that he was weak physically and emotionally and struggling. And they came and stood around him. And whether they touched him or just being in their presence, they were able somehow to transmit strength into who he was. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. I'm like, God, send some ministering angels. We need it. Amen? So be on your best behavior tomorrow. All right? I'm serious. Don't, don't, listen, don't walk by a homeless guy and be rude. God might be testing you. Amen? That's me. I'm done with dispensations. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been fun teaching it to you. We'll talk next week about the Antichrist and my mother-in-law. God love you. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday. Read Judges chapter 7.